Welcome to Zora's Domain, home of the fish people in Tears of the Kingdom. At a glance, it looks like a pretty safe location to live, but do not let those looks deceive you. Today, me and fellow Zelda enthusiast Draken are going to take a deep dive into the defenses of Zora's Domain to determine if it's all it's cracked up to be, or if the Zora are fish in a barrel waiting to be shot. Hello, thanks for having me. I'm Draken Wild, your resident draconic scholar. I do deep dives into Hyrule's lore, with a special focus on more down-to-earth aspects of it, like castle defenses. But without further ado, let's analyze Zora's Domain. To handle this analysis, we're going to be splitting the video into four parts. Part number one will be about the pros of Zora's Domain's defenses. Part number two will be about the things that Zora's Domain does terribly. Part number three is where we'll take a closer look at the military of the Zora and the monsters to see how they stack up against each other. And then in part number four, we will consider what would happen if the monsters launched a full-on invasion of the Zora's Domain, and if the Zora would survive. So let's talk about the pros. What do the Zora do right? And to do that, we're going to need to first take a look at geography. <coughs> Horrifying, I know, but geography is important since all forms of defense and logistics are built around it. So, for anybody who doesn't already know, the Zora are a water-reliant tribe of fish people. So naturally, they made their home in the isolated river valley to the east of Hyrule Field. And the geography is honestly incredible. For starters, the Zora's domain is surrounded by a huge set of mountains which normally would be a problem, such as in the Battle of Dien Bien Phu in Vietnam, when the French were surrounded by hills, and the Vietnamese soldiers fired artillery at them from on top of the hills surrounding their HQ. But in this case, the cliffs around the Zora's domain are so steep that no enemy force could feasibly take those hills without going up the extremely windy set of paths that leads all the way up there, which is just not, not realistic to expect of any military. Even Hannibal crossing the Alps would seem easy in comparison. It's honestly a miracle that any monsters have ever gotten on top of this mountain here, yet despite the odds, there is one encampment right here which does pose a significant threat. And there are some other small encampments too, I just don't know where they are off the top of my head. But anyways, all that together means that the only realistic way for a land army to attack the Zora is by using the narrow winding bridges and pathways that the Zora themselves constructed, which means that you're going to have so many choke points on your way up there that it's going to turn into a slaughter. And before we start saying, wait a minute, couldn't you just boat up the river to Zora's domain? Guys, there's waterfalls like all over the river here. There is no way a boat is getting all the way up from the bottom to the top of the domain. On the subject of waterfalls, they're actually an extremely beneficial part of the Zora defense plan because Zora can swim up waterfalls, giving them a significant verticality advantage because they can get all the way on top of the mountains with relative ease, while no other monster can do that. In fact, every single waterway you see that is connected to the Zora's domain could realistically become a highway for the Zora to get to any point of Hyrule that is that is connected to the river. By that logic, the Zora could get all the way down to Lake Hylia, which we have seen in the previous game, or could even get really close to the Gerudo Desert. Anywhere that the river goes, the Zora can as well, which is probably one of the reasons that the Zora and the kings of Hyrule have been such staunch allies with one another, because the Zora control all the waterways around central Hyrule, and the kingdom of Hyrule controls the land of central Central Hyrule, so they make a perfect couple. The Zora could even go north if they wanted to, because they could go up this giant waterfall here, walk across the small stretch of land, swim across the pond, and then walk across another stretch of land, both of them being very small, and easily get into Akala Lake. That makes this a really nice emergency escape plan if they are surrounded by monsters from the south. And the river doesn't stop there, it's also a source of food. As you probably are aware, there's lots of fish in here, and fish are the primary food of the Zora diet, raw fish. So by having fish literally underneath their home, and, and because their river is super easy to access, they can also eat crabs, FYI, it means that food is basically a non-issue. Water as well, I mean, is there really any question about that? I think hydration is the least of their concerns. The only potential weakness there is that if the water was poisoned, in the reservoir nearby, then that would poison the water and the food in Zora's domain, as we see in Tears of the Kingdom. But as long as that is prevented, then, then uh, the food and water supplies should be fine. 
It's also worth noting that these giant crystals that are sticking out from the walls of the domain are what the Zora used to construct their homes. This rock is apparently extremely durable and is also rust proof, hence the reason that they constructed their home out of it. We don't know what the name of this rock is, but it is very nice. And uh, it's also within a rock's throw of the domain. So if ever they need it, they have it. So without even considering the architecture of Zoro's domain, it's already looking like a defensive juggernaut. But now let's shift our focus onto the architecture because as much as the geography is helpful, architecture can heighten those strengths if it is done well. And the Zora have done uh, fine? Fine, I think, I think fine is a good word for the architecture. The issue is that the Zora are more concerned with the decorative nature of their architecture than they are with the practical aspects of it. Take for instance, these two towers at the entrance to the domain. These would be the perfect place for a gatehouse to prevent the enemy from waltzing in. But there are no guards posted here and there's no gatehouse. So if the enemy wanted to, they could just walk right in. But I'm gonna still try and stay positive because there are a few things which are really nice about the Zora architecture. For instance, even though they don't have any gatehouses or walls in place, they do have very narrow choke points that they could fight the enemy at or barricade if need be to stop and advance. They also have the ability to create rock slides if needed to destroy parts of the road to prevent the enemy from going further, something that the upheaval has already done a little bit for them. It's also really nice that they implemented waterfalls into the design of the city so that if you fall into the under area, then you can easily swim straight back up using the waterfalls. So even though there aren't many defensive measures in place, there are still some ways that it plays to their strengths. I don't think I have anything else to say about the architecture of the domain, uh, although I know Draken has some stuff to say about it, which is a little bit less positive than mine. Uh, but I'm the positive guy, I'm the good cop. That's my job, I'm I'm good cop man. And I'm coming in to tell you the good stuff, and Draken's gonna tell you how this place sucks. So, uh, let's do it. Zora's domain is beautiful, truly a feat of ornamental architecture. Unfortunately, it comes with significant drawbacks. First, the bridges leading into the domain are made of stone. This isn't a problem in itself. It becomes a problem when combined with the lack of a decent outer wall. In case of an attack, easily destructible bridges could serve as a gate of sorts. Not a very efficient gate, but a gate nonetheless. But because those bridges are made of stone, Zora can't easily break them, thus the access to the domain is left wide open for an attacking force. Second, that wall. That stupid wall. What even is the purpose of it? It won't keep anything or anyone out, it doesn't provide cover, it looks like an aqueduct, but no water flows through it. But what it would do is it would make for a great spot for airdropping monster archers. Yep, it's wide and it surrounds pretty much the entire domain. It's asking to have bow goblins put on it. Third, and the most fatal, this stupid giant fish. This thing, oh, it's a thing of nightmares. Who, why, why would you build this? Who allowed it? Whose idea was it? Is it a monarch's monument to pride and ignorance? Oh, I bet it is. Um, <clears throat> excuse the outburst there, but hear me out. That sculpture, a very pretty, yes, and huge, heavy, with a thin tail holding up a giant fin, right above all businesses and living quarters. I'm sorry, but if I were intent on dealing as much death and destruction as possible, this is the target. I'd send in a squadron of Erokuda, either with bomb barrels or with archers equipped with explosives. I'd have them target the thinnest part of the sculpture. If it breaks, it will crush all living quarters beneath, along with civilians hiding inside. And Zora can't do much to stop such an attack either. They can't do both all that well, leaving them with virtually no response to flying threats. 
The worst part in all of this? If they ever needed to evacuate the domain, they only have two escape routes available and both of them can be cut off with just a little bit of foresight. If that happened, the retreat would turn into a massacre. Well, that was cheery. Okay, moving on to something probably just as depressing, uh, we actually got to start talking about the forces of the Rito and the monsters. The Rito being the water people with the strength of going up rivers and such, and the monster forces being the... Well, y you know, they're monster forces. Have fun, uh, Draken. Have fun telling everybody about, about the forces of the Zora and the, the monsters. Go. The ornate excess and needlessly decorative nature of Zora's architecture is carried over in their weaponry. They have thin, rapier-like short swords, which are unlikely to be good for anything besides stabbing. They have massive long swords with multiple holes punched through them for decoration, which, you know, can't be good. Also, you really don't want that hook at the tip there. If you stab with it, that bit is getting stuck and you don't want that. That's because when that happens, your options are to either stop and waste time trying to force it out or to drop your weapon. Neither is ideal in the middle of a raging battle. Also, it looks so big and unwieldy in general, like something you'd make purely to hang on a wall. Zora also have bows and shields. The bows are flat out trash though because they're made out of pure metal and cannot bend like a wooden bow is supposed to. Not only does this make them less functional, it also makes them a whole heckin' lot heavier. So understandably, no Zora has ever been seen using one of these bows in a Zelda game. Which in turn means that the Zora have no ranged weapons to shoot flying enemies with, so they are highly vulnerable to things like Arrokuda and Wizrobes. Zora shields, like their weapons, are also extremely decorative and also quite small compared to the size of the Zora who wield them. That's not necessarily the biggest deal by itself, but when you consider that the Zora barely wear any armor and just have bits and pieces here and there, it makes you wonder why they didn't make larger shields to cover more of their bodies. Even if they made it out of a different material like wood, I think that would still be preferable if it were a larger shield. The preferred weapon of the Zora is a spear, which they have a few varieties of, the most common one looks a lot like a harpoon and, well, it sure is great for throwing at the enemy and having it stay in whatever it hits. But I don't think was the intention here. Nothing bad to say about Silver Scale Spear though, that one looks actually usable. It also has a hook, but smaller than the other two, so there actually is hope for pulling it out. I'm being so negative. But the Zora actually do have things going for them. Their ability to swim up waterfalls for one, they can freely move between the river below the domain and the domain itself, as well as up and down the mountains surrounding it. That gives them an edge in terms of mobility that can only be beaten by flying monsters. Similarly, Zora are also able to move up and down the river with extreme efficiency. This, in theory, should afford them easy control over the majority length of the only footpath leading to the domain. The Zora also have the second best trained army in all of Hyrule, right behind the Gerudo, which offers them a big advantage in melee combat and logistics. I do wish the Zora would use their army more though, especially as lookouts on the outskirts of their domain uh, to spot incoming attacks. As it is, the army does not post any soldiers on the pathway leading to the domain, so they have no way of telling if an invasion is about to happen. And the last thing which really must be said about the Zora is that they are fatally allergic to electricity. So if one of them were to be hit by an electric arrow or a shocking sword, they would undoubtedly be knocked out or flat out killed. This weakness is something that the monsters in the area have picked up on, and is why many of them wield electric weapons. Speaking of which, let's transition to the monsters and discuss their strengths and weaknesses. The monsters had a pretty strong presence in the river valley of the Zora's domain during Breath of the Wild, but uh, maybe the situation has gotten better. Things only got worse from there, Zora were able to dispose of the Lino, but it is a small victory in the grand scheme of things. Eh, deck you nuts. The Lysal Falls, previously concentrated around the lower portion of the path, now have spread out, 
That made space for Bokoblins and Arokuda to move in as well, putting even more pressure on the domain. Those monster forces have access to explosives and shock arrows, albeit the latter is less common now. What became more common are electric whiz ropes. Instead of just one of them, now a total of three made their home in the surrounding area. And to top it all off, Two Gleoks now live within short flying distance. The Beast of Akala Citadel is especially problematic. It wields lightning magic and is known to bring down savage thunderstorms and that... That is an issue. Zora really don't have a recourse against that. Monster influence isn't limited only to the southwestern portion of the region either, they are also extremely common in the surrounding mountains. They have no easy way down to join an assault on foot, but they do have a rokuda. These giant bat things are capable of carrying a bokoblin sized monster. They could easily get large groups down onto the bridges and domain walls. Let's just say... Zora's position has become much more dire than Sidon or Dorfan would care to admit. And thus we are brought to the final part of the video. Let's put ourselves into the position of Ganondorf's assistant. The big guy wants you to organize an invasion of the domain using all of the assets we just mentioned. How do you do it? Now, the easiest way to wipe out the Zora is to send one singular Thundergliok. It's like taking the nuclear option. There is no defense against it. And even if the Zora invested in archers and managed to fend the dragon off, it would inflict a huge amount of casualties. However, that's a little bit overpowered and anticlimactic, especially since this video is supposed to be about castle defenses and there is no amount of castle defenses that will protect you against a Gliok. So let's take the Gliok's off the table. We're gonna assume that they're too lazy to invade the domain or they're uh, allergic to seafood or something, so they will not take part in the battle. But that's okay, because it still leaves us with a plethora of monster forces to work with. To demonstrate this, we're going to be using a state-of-the-art visualization device, also known as a whiteboard. Oh! But don't worry, she's gonna get the job done just fine. Here is the plan. Step one, send the Western Lizalfos and Bokoblin troopers towards the domain, running it across the bridge as fast as possible. Lizalfos are some of the fastest creatures in Hyrule, and if they run in a horde formation, then they could easily bum rush their way through the paltry Zora defenses and catch the guards completely unprepared. The Bokoblins in the army would not quite be able to keep up with this bum rush, but they would eventually reach the city gates and be able to contribute to the fighting. Once both parties reach the city, it'll be their job to cause as much havoc as possible to distract the Zora soldiers from what will be happening in step two. Step two, order the electric whiz robes in the area to float towards the Zora city. Once they arrive, the guards will be too distracted with the Lizalfos and Bokoblins to stop the wizards. This will allow the whiz robes to throw balls of electricity everywhere in the city and cause massive thunderstorms that will kill the Zora. That's what that is. That's a thunderstorm. Even if some of the Zora guards try to stop the whiz robes, they don't have any reliable ranged weapons. And if they throw their spears to kill the whiz robes, that will leave each of them completely unarmed and vulnerable because they won't have anything else to use for melee combat. Not very ideal if you ask me. And that leads us to step three. Organize a squadron of Arrokuda to airdrop Bokoblin archers down from the mountains and onto the walls surrounding the Zora's domain, which is like the demonstration we did earlier. It also would not be a terrible idea to attach as many electrical fruits to the tips of your weapons and arrows as possible, because obviously that's gonna do more damage. Altogether, that gives us three steps. Step number one, send the Lizalfos and Bokoblins into the city because they have no defenses. Step number two, send in the whiz robes. And step number three, send in the Erukudas with Boko archers to cause even more havoc. If Ganondorf's forces did all of this, then it would cripple the Zora military and cause a mass exodus to the north and the south via the rivers. At which point, if Ganondorf really wanted to, he could probably cut off their escape or let them leave in shambles to spread the fear and terror throughout the rest of Hyrule. And so would end the Zora's domain. Is what I would say if it weren't for these freaking rocks. During the upheaval, 
no less than five rock slides were created, which have made it impossible to reach the city on the main road, making this type of invasion impossible. Now, of course, Ganondorf could still send the Wizrobes and the Arrokuta to attack the city, but something tells me that if you want to defeat the Zora entirely, you're going to need a little bit more juice. But you're not going to get that unless you open up the path to the domain. But if you start mining out the paths, especially with dynamite, you're gonna alert the Zora and they're gonna beef up their defenses. And if they have beefier defenses, then it's gonna be even harder to take. Thus, the Zora who have no walls, no gatehouses, and no archers would unwittingly be saved by a bunch of stupid rocks. Of course, that is contingent on the idea that the Zora would put up defenses if they knew an invasion was coming, but I don't know if we can assume that because the Zora have a pretty bad track record. But hey, maybe one of the other races in Hyrule would fare a bit better. Maybe the Rito? Perhaps? If you'd like to see how the Rito military would handle a monster invasion, then click this box right here. Because it's going to be taking you to another video that I did with Draken on her channel. Thanks again for having me, Brad. My pleasure, Draken. Oh, and if you have any critiques for this video, then let us know down below. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go touch some grass. It's I see you next time. Have fun storming the castle.